What's up guys, David here and welcome to another Endurance Day video. So 3D printing things is super cool and you can get, get nice 3D shapes. If you want to create a 3D shape out of something that is two-dimensional, you're going to have to slice the model somehow to create three-dimensional things out of it. One way is to do it uh, in like a cross pattern like this and the other way is to stack it. But getting the files from a 3D file into the nice pieces to laser cut is actually quite difficult if you don't know how. So let's hop over to the computer and I'm going to show you how it is super easy. So the program that we're using to convert our 3D objects into nice slices that we can laser cut is called Slicer for Fusion 360. You can just uh, search for that in Google and you're going to find this uh, web page. It's meant as an add-on to Fusion 360 but it also works as a standalone program. So when we open it up, uh, we are greeted with this screen here and we can import our model. I'm just gonna choose this little uh, candle holder here and as you can see it got imported here and you can see it. Over here you can uh, change uh, your units to whatever you want and this model actually is uh, imported incorrectly for me. Uh, the length here would have been 20 centimeters, which is way too big for the, that candle. I believe uh, it's by a factor of like inch metric conversion is wrong here. So I, I uh, just made a calculation that that's the factor that I need. Uh, your model will probably import correctly. That's just a little anomaly here. And then down here, the important thing is construction technique. And here you can select one of those and first off we're going to start with stab slices. This is now going to convert your 3D object into light stacks here. And as you can see this doesn't quite look uh, how we want it yet. First thing we have to change is the manufacturing settings here. Um, you can either choose one of the predefined things, but you probably want to um, add your own here. I've added here my 3mm plywood with the dimensions that I'm using, the thickness and the margins. And then I, you can select it here, and then the thickness at least looks correct. But we also don't want it sliced this way, but actually the other way, so we can change the slice direction here. Select this here and change it by 90 degrees. This now updates it to be sliced uh, in a horizontal manner. And over here you can already see a preview of how the files are gonna look that we can slice later. And there is some kind of uh, thing here where it creates these little holes here that I think are meant to like put nails or something through but I don't really want those so one workaround that I found since there's no option to turn them off is to add dowels and actually add them in custom location and just uh, when we look at this here just move them all outside or delete them and that way uh, there's not actually gonna be any dowel holes but it also won't create those other pins this is just a bit of a workaround and then, when everything looks good, uh, you can go down here to Get Plans and this is going to show you the files that you can export here as a DXF. Now, while it does try to arrange it onto a nice uh, sheet, it's not ideal and it does not rotate the pieces in any way to try and fit them onto it uh, a bit better and it also doesn't move them together quite as far as I would like. So I'm just going to save it as a uh, DXF export it to the computer. Uh, I already uh, saved those here and then I'm actually gonna jump over and modify those files a little bit in Fusion 360 to just get the maximum usage of my material. So we're in Fusion 360 here and I've just clicked on uh, import insert uh, DXF and selected it and here uh, first of all we can kind of choose what we actually want and with what we don't want. Uh, Automatically there is like the numbers uh, written on it, which is uh, nice and handy for easier assembly, but uh, I don't necessarily actually want them on there uh, since I want the faces to be nice. So here I can just uh, deselect annotation, that's going to remove it. And I'm also going to later want to remove uh, 
not not the boundary but uh, the frame here which is just the outline that I don't actually want to cut that's just uh, for reference but for now I'm actually gonna keep it so I know how big my workpiece is and then that's okay and I'm just gonna now that's slamming me I'm gonna just uh, insert the other DXF on top of it For this one I'm gonna not select the frame and also not the uh, annotation. This is now uh, imported as two different sketches here in Fusion, but I'm just gonna go into uh, the second sketch, select all of these, do Ctrl-C to copy, finish, move into the first sketch, uh, paste them with, with Ctrl-V. And then for now I'll just uh, move them off to the side here. Now here you can see that there's a lot of unused space. And the easiest thing is just to uh, simply uh, select for example these small pieces and you can easily just move them somewhere in here. And it'll cut perfectly fine and it just saves uh, a lot of the workpiece to be used for other things. This way you can optimize quite a lot uh, how much you actually can fit uh, on one piece of material. It's kind of a bummer that you can't uh, adjust uh, that within the other software, but that's just how it is. I'm actually also going to move them closer to each other since I know that this is no issue whatsoever for me. So now, very easily, I've managed to fit those extra three pieces onto the same work plane and as a last step I'm also gonna delete the outer frame. And with that I can simply right click onto the sketch here, save as DXF and then have the file that I can import into Lightburn. So here we're inside of Lightburn and I just imported this file here, uh, applied my preset for 3 milliliter for 3 mm plywood and which is 170 mm a minute, uh, two passes full power on the 10 watt endurance laser with a step down of 1 mm in between. Um, this is how easy it is to convert your 3D model into something that you can cut out on your laser. But there are many, many more features inside of Slicer that is not just uh, slicing them into a nice, even paths like that. And just want to quickly show you some other. Uh, things that are available and the most uh, usable other one uh, would be interlocking slices here and this basically creates a mesh of like interlocking things that slide together let's decrease the number here a bit so you can see it a lot better and um, so just like kind of slots together and you can really get a really cool effect and it also uses a lot less uh, wood this way
here you can see another model that I imported and it's just a bust from Yoda as you can see here and I just want to use this to kind of show you the limitations of uh, this like it there are a lot of like small pieces here that are just not properly connected um, this is just what happens if you have a very detailed model that has thin parts now you can get a, a bit more uh, detail if you go to stack slices but and even with this rather small model here it already uses two full sheets of, of the plywood and it just adds up quite quickly the laser time as well and even the assembly of something like this is going to take quite a long time so you do have to choose your battles and for some uh, models it just doesn't make sense to stack it up like that uh, you might be able to for example do this with cardboard which would be a lot faster to cut on the laser as well and also cheaper and um, then you could use this method but there are also other uh, things available like radial where you're going out from the center point um, you're just gonna have to play around with it and see which one looks the best for your model and where does actually everything that you want is actually attached But now let's see how this Yoda is turning out over on the laser. So we're over at the laser now and I've got uh, my 3mm sheet of plywood installed here and taped down on the edges so that it is nice and flat to the work table as the sheet itself is slightly bowed. So I'm just gonna go over to the controller now and press start. So as you can see I've got Yoda here assembled and while it's not a super good likeness uh, I think uh, Yoda has enough of a like characteristic uh, form that you can recognize it and the ears don't look the best since uh, they of course weren't represented properly but it still looks really cool and most of the pieces just uh, slid together and worked fine I didn't even have to put any glue only the small pieces I put some glue to hold them in place. So I think this technique is really powerful and actually uh, super cool. And if we just take a look at the candle holder here, uh, it also came out really good. Uh, I actually probably prefer this one uh, since it's a much more simpler design. So that's probably just the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you want to have a design that is relatively simple uh, if you want to use this technique. Uh, it just comes out a lot better. So I think this could also make a really good gift for the Christmas season. Uh, you could have a bunch of different uh, shapes uh, of candle holders uh, made out on a laser and assembling them is also quite quick. So I hope you learned something in this video and I'm gonna see you next time.